Hey, last Boy Scouts. This is Scotty and Reed. The Beard. Reporting to you from Balch Park, located just above Springville, California. Home of the giant sequoia. We're here today. We're gonna take you on a little hike around the park on one of its trails. Talk a little bit about its history and do a little bit of a bushcraft. So what we want to demonstrate today is some basic shelter building with equipment you may carry on board. We're going to use part of our 10 C's that we've discussed before. And we want to show you maybe a few little skill sets that you can uh, practice and demonstrate at home to help you with your uh, campsite when you're out camping or just adventuring in the woods. Something you guys can practice throwing your tool bag to use later down the road. All right, so stay tuned, stick around and stand by. As always, it's going to be a good one. So on our hike, we were um, just walking down the trail, kind of looking at different things. And you know, we spoke uh, on a previous um, video about being mindful of your environment, having your head up, looking. Um, you'll be amazed at what you find. And if Scott will pan the camera down, you can see that we ran across a few different things here. In this area right here, we have what appears to be a raccoon track. And this is paying attention to our environment, and we're looking... Wherever, wherever looking, wherever we're at. Here, we notice we have a deer track. From the size of it, I'd probably say it's probably a doe. And then here, it's a little bit, it's been a little bit disheveled. But one last track. This is a bobcat track. You can see this four toes and a paw are that pad. So, when you're out in the wilderness, the one thing you need to uh, be aware of is that you're not the only one out there. You have wildlife out there, too. So, uh, be ever mindful of whatever's out there, and, and you're looking around. Be amazed at what you might see. Hopefully, while we're out today, we might run across some of this wildlife. It'd be great to get some, some of that on uh, camera. But um, just pay attention when you're out and about. Uh, we're in their environment, and so uh, be mindful of that when you're out and hiking and having fun in the woods.
You know, fire in the wilderness can be really hazardous. It can destroy so much of uh, what Mother Nature's provided for us. That's beauty, that provides shelter and home for all the wildlife that's out here. But it can also be beneficial in some ways. It helps the forest wipe itself clean and start fresh. And it also provides natural shelter for anybody who might be stranded in the wilderness. Now, if you take a look at this very, very old giant sequoia, you can see burn marks that have essentially etched out an archway and a natural shelter in a situation where you have high winds, rain, even snow. This is a great place where you can hide yourself out, find nice natural shelter, and yeah, provide protection until you can self-rescue. So one of the things I appreciate most about being out here in the outdoors is that we get to go and be places that, well, other people haven't been before, and it's good to discover those areas. And I think that's what I enjoy most is to be somewhere that's been untouched. What do you think, Scott? I like this bench we found. A bench, middle of the forest. Yeah, I'll sit down. So one of the things we want to demonstrate also is how to make a bowline. So I've just taken a small piece of cordage here. Bowline's pretty simple. So we take two or two halves like this. We're going to fold them over so that you can see where they cross like there. We take this part, fold it over so that this end runs through the middle. We pull that up. Then we take this end turn the corner with it, pinch, and there's your simple bowline knot. So next we're going to make a prussic knot or a climber's knot. So the way we start doing that, we have one strand here, but before we start our prussic knot, we're going to have to tie this together. We're going to utilize a fisherman's knot. So fisherman's knot, the way we start that, so we're crossing our two ends. We're taking one end and making an overhand knot. Here. And an overhand knot here. are a little sticky we're pulling that together and creating a fisherman's knot now for a prussic knot we're going to utilize this here so a prussic knot is we're going to bring this over the top and we're going to wrap this around once, twice, and as we're doing that, we're stacking our lines here. It's a little difficult to do, but we're trying to line everything up. And we can pull that around, or there we go. Let's line these up a little more, get them straight. So we have two sides to this knot. But as you see, when we put tension this way, or this way, it doesn't move. But now if we pinch together, it'll slide back and forth. Here, it will not, but together, 
it will. So that with two with two fishermen or a fisherman's knot, this is a prosic knot. And you can utilize this when you're putting up your shelters if you're using a ridge line. First step with our basic setup for a we're gonna do a lean to shelter to start with. Alright. Um, we've already set up our ridge line, but we're gonna look over here. We've wrapped our ridge line around the tree. This is where our bowline is tied. We've run the line through, create what's called a running bowline. Now this is a toggle, and we've just pulled it through and placed the toggle in, and then placed tension on it. We'll go ahead and come down our ridge line here. You see both of our prusik knots already on the line. And then to tie off it on the other end, we did a basic trucker's knot and we tied it back into itself in order to keep it from slipping and going anywhere. So now, we're going to grab our pro six and I'm going to move those to the center. For basic lean-to shelter, we're going to use our tarp here. And our tarp that I have is quite a good sized tarp, as you can see. And we're using just one edge. Now, the way I like to do this you can tell the tarp didn't get a whole lot of use because it's still stuck together. But it is a water resistant tarp. So what we're going to do is I'm going to utilize one of my prusiks here, and I've already created a couple of toggles. So I'm going to put my line through here, place a toggle in it. So that creates that tension there. Get that a little further up so we have a little more secure base. All right, so that's fine for the moment. I'm going to find the other end of my tarp. Prusik knot through. And you guys a secondary toggle. Now what I can do is I can stretch this here. And I can stretch it here. To create that shelter spacing. Now, if need be, I can tie this off here to the middle. And I could do that by twisting this line and utilizing a toggle there also in order to attach to that. Now, our tarp is quite large, so we're going to back it out here. things that we can do because the tarp is so large is we can actually tuck this under and I have already made or I've already have pre-made stakes here I didn't make them myself by the way they they actually came with the tarp these uh, aluminum stakes which are really a fairly good quality. Now I'm using it, utilizing it like this and tying off. You can, again, use that with a toggle. This will sit right in that notch. And then I'm going to put my stake into the ground. Now if need be, I can use a rock to hammer that in. I'm going to tuck this under. If we can come around the back here. So we're going to do this at three points. Now 
hook into that notch. And then for our third point. So now we'll come around the front. We have a basic lean to shelter. With a base. And there you go. Your basic lean to shelter utilizing a base at the bottom. Um, keep you out of the weather. And uh, not a bad little spot to camp. All right, Reed just showed us uh, an awesome way to how to make a, a lean-to with his big-ass tarp here. I'm going to utilize this same tarp and show you guys how to make an A-frame. A-frame, right? So basically, you're going to get two sides that are going to be covered with openings on opposite ends of the ridge line. Since the ridge line's already set up, I figured, hey, what the heck, instead of doing the whole process over again, I'll just do the same process. Not gonna need the toggles this time, so basically I'm gonna take the tarp and throw it over our ridge line. Wind permitting to help me out. I already removed the stakes from the lean-to that Reed had already set up in the back side, which I probably could have left in there. Just tucked it up over and done it again, right? So there's a couple different ways I can do this. I can still utilize the prussics by putting the toggles in and putting tension on both sides, but I don't necessarily have to. Another method I can do is simply, I'll take these stakes that he got himself for the tarp and just creating a little tension. Uh, I forgot, I gotta feed it back through. Come on. All right, feeding it back through if it'll permit me. We can just hammer it on in there. Like I said, if it'll permit me, screw it. Made myself some steaks. All right, so basically, take your handy dandy tool, hammer it on down. Wanted to take this time to show off the axe that I had just refurbished, utilizing the axe head father-in-law gave me from his grandfather check her out she's pretty okay there's one end I'm gonna try this again on the other side using the proper peg a little bit of tension I grew up utilizing those old crappy metal pen, tent pegs that are really flimsy and just kind of like formed an L at the top, right? I'm not used to these fancy handy dandy ones. Let's just put some tension on that, right? There she goes. And I basically am going to do the same thing on the back side. a lot, Reed, for making me look like a fool on YouTube using your tent pegs. 
You're very welcome. Gracias. Sante sana. Anyways, you guys get the point. I'm not gonna mess with it. Like I said, if I wanted to readjust this, I could take these portions that he has, pull the press on down the line, attach a toggle, put some tension, and voila. So for our last shelter, we're gonna do or attempt to do a plow point. It's been a while since I've made one. So um, we're gonna take down our, our, uh, our ridge line here. This is gonna be different. We're still gonna use a ridge line, but we're gonna use it in a different way. It's not gonna be from tree to tree. So I'm gonna go ahead and detach it here. Trucker's not a little tighter than I thought it was, but there we go. Pull my trucker's not out. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this ridge line. I'm going to walk it down. And I'm going to put this in the ground. I'm using a tent peg. It's going to be at an angle. So I'm going to go ahead and create a trucker's knot there that I can utilize. Put one of my tent pegs in it and tighten it down. And I'm going to use my handy dandy tool. You can see it's, well, it's smaller than Scott's, but then again, I don't have to compensate. Alright, on this end I'm going to actually take, on my ridge line, I'm going to take my toggle out and I'm going to move my line up slightly on the tree. Still have to use that. So now we have a little bit steeper angle here. Now, um, we're gonna use lies our toggles from earlier and my Prusik knot. At the front of the tarp. Like that, whoops. Now we can tension that up. We're coming down this way. We're going to extend our tarp down. And we don't even necessarily need to tension at the bottom. But we, what we are going to do is, in a plow point, you see our flap comes out like this. We are going to tuck under at an angle.
But what we can do is create underneath somewhat of a floor pane. for ourselves. Continue to tuck it in here. And you start to see that take shape. In order to be able to do that a little bit better, we're gonna stake out one side here. So we add a little tension. see we're tucking this under at that corner Viking hatchet there. Now we can adjust from there. As we need to. In order to get everything tucked up underneath. This is a little more difficult one as far as shelters to build just because of the odd angles on it. But from this angle, you can see this is why we call it a plow point. And we can do some more fiddling with it in order to level out that flooring and we can stake down the back if we needed to but this will take you out of the rain and this will keep you out of the weather in an emergency so three basic shelters we did a lean to an a-frame and some the semblance of a plow point so there you have it three basic shelters get out and practice them so we're going to wrap it up here uh, at Balch Park. Uh, thanks for joining us again. Uh, we had a good time. Um, as always, we get out. We like to demonstrate some of our skills and hope you guys learn from it. You know, we learn along the way also. Um, but nice little hike through the woods. Got to see some pretty interesting uh, scenery as far as uh, the giant sequoias. Found a lot of tracks along the way. And we had a good time doing the shelter build. Hope you guys learned a little something from that. And uh, Scotty, um, hey, once again, thank you, brother, for coming out. And um, always enjoy our time out here. And, uh, you know, come out and just get away from daily life and, and be able to do this. So, yeah, I think it's uh, definitely uh, nostalgic for me. I grew up coming to Balch Park with my father. Um, fishing, camping, hiking, the whole shebang. I did many a scout trip up here, uh, which led to me getting my Eagle Scout. And this place never ceases to amaze me. These are some of the biggest trees in the world by volume alone. And they are extraordinarily beautiful. And I think it's only fitting that we end off where we started. There's the rabbit hole. Um, until next time, this is Scotty from the Last Boy Scouts. This is Reed. The beard. The beard land trip. Um, catch you guys next time. Be safe. Be vigilant. Knowledge is your weapon. Be prepared. <laughs> Have a good day.